Ah yes, the age old question, should you use a tag or a custom field to save this data about your contacts? Let's start by looking at custom fields and when you could use them and why tags would not make sense to do these specific things. So the first way that you'll use custom fields is to collect more information about your contacts because the more you know about someone, the more you can write directly to them and their needs and desires. For example, if we were a coach who was helping busy entrepreneurs build better habits that help them achieve their goals, we could use custom fields to collect information about what they're most interested in learning about, different technologies they've used to try and build their better habits, whether or not they currently work for themselves or someone else, and also, what's the pain point that's causing them to want to build better habits? We can also ask them how many books they've read to make a change. Let's set this up, and in doing so, I'll be able to point out some reasons that you'd use a custom field over a tag. To create custom fields under Funnel Kit Automations and Contacts, click on Fields. And in the top right, you can see that we can create a field group or a field. I'll click on Field Groups, and then create a field group name segmentation, and click Create. And down here, now we can add fields into this field group. So I'll click Create Field, name my field, and then under here, I'll assign it to my new segmentation field group. And then if we click to select the field type, this leads me into the first reason that you choose custom fields over tags, which is that you can save data in multiple formats. You could save data about a contact in a text input, as a number, text area, drop down, radio button, or checkboxes. And checkboxes allow you to save more than one value for a field about a contact. This is different to tags because when you create a tag, you can only enter text values here. So if you wanted to recreate what we're doing with the custom field and add their interests to a contact as tags, you'd have to do something like interested in productivity and then add that. And then you'd have to create another tag and do interested in meditation and then add that. And this gets really messy really fast. I'll select checkboxes. I'll click add option and add my options in here. And once done, click create. I'll add my second field, which is going to be about the software and technology they've used. And then under field type, I'll choose checkboxes again so that they can select more than one option. And once done, click create. My third field, for employment status is going to be a drop down that has two options like so, and I'll click create. Lastly, let's add our field that tracks how many books the user has read on building better habits. And we'll set this to be a number field so that they can just add a guess, enter the number of books they think that they've consumed. Scrolling down, we now have our field group segmentation with all those fields there. And if we go to contacts and then I click into my contact, under the general field group, we have our segmentation. And if I click here, I could type a number. Here I have the drop down, And then here I have the check boxes in the first two. In addition to storing more information about your contacts, you'll use custom fields to track your users through a process in your website. For example, imagine that we have a lead magnet on our website and a lead magnet is just a great way to grow your email list fast where you give something away for free in exchange for a contact giving you their details like an email address. In this example, our lead magnet is a series of three videos that they get access to. The first video they can watch right now, but to get access to videos two and three, they need to click here and subscribe to our email list. Let's go ahead and set that up and then I'll show you how to use this to better market to your contacts. Running your business, you're more than likely going to develop multiple lead magnets and so it's best to group them into a field group. So here I'll click create field group, name it lead magnets and click create. Then I'll click create field. I'll give it the name of my lead magnet and then here I'll assign it to my lead magnets field group. The type of field is going to be a drop down because I only want the user to have one of these values at any given time because we're tracking them through a series of steps. I'll click add option, add my first option requested, and then add a second option for when they download it. And I'll click create. Now, if I go to all contacts and then click into my profile and scroll down, here's our field group with our custom field. And if I click here, these are the options that this field can have. So now when a user comes down here, they watch video one and they click to get access to video two. They put in their details and click to unlock the video. It says to check their inbox. And behind the scenes, we've updated this custom field to be requested. When they open up the email and click to access video two, 
we update that custom field to be downloaded. And with this setup, we can see some other benefits to using custom fields over tags. The first one is that all the different information that we've collected about a contact is segmented out into their own field groups inside the user interface here. So up the top, we have all the general fields. Then under that, we have our segmentation and below that, our lead magnets. And you can see I've gone and added two more lead magnets into here. And as your website grows and you add more lead magnets, they would just come into here. So when you come and view a contact, you know exactly where to go to see their status for a particular lead magnet. And the ability to organize this information into the groups that you see here is not something that you can do with tags. Here under tags, I've added a tag for our lead magnet when somebody requests it, and then a second tag for when they download it. And then I've added two more lead magnets in here with those statuses, requested downloaded, requested downloaded. If we were to use tags to track this, it would look like this. For this first lead magnet, they have downloaded it. And for the second lead magnet, they have requested it, but they have not downloaded it. But in reality, relying on tags starts to look something like this, where you have your lead magnet tags, and then what this contact's interested in, and then whether or not they're self-employed, and they just keep growing this list of tags and mixing different types of information about a contact into this one category of tags. And not only is this really hard for you to come into the contacts profile here and see exactly what this contact has done, but it also makes it harder for you, the store owner, to manage this and identify errors. Which leads me into my second point as to why you'd choose custom fields over tags when you're documenting a contact's journey through a series of steps. When we created the lead magnet field, we selected it to be a drop down or select fill type, and the values here could be requested or downloaded. The contact can only have one of these values at any given time for this particular field. When you use tags, that is not true. A contact could exist with both the requested tag and the downloaded tag for the same lead magnet. And this makes it difficult for you to segment out your audience and send targeted marketing messages based on their status in that process. Now you could go out and set up an automation so that when they download this lead magnet, you remove this tag and then add this tag. But now you have to remember to do that. And if you don't, then you've messed up your data in your CRM. Another reason to use custom fields instead of tags is that you can output the value of a custom field in the emails that you send to contacts using FunnelKit automations. Here I am in the email builder, and if I go ahead and click on merge tag and then search for fields, these are all the custom fields on my contacts. With the wants to learn more about field, if I copy this and then paste it into the email and for the value of that field, set it to be meditation for my profile, now, when I send that email, the value of that field is output inside the email, which makes it feel more personal. With tags, that is not possible. You do have the option inside of the builder to go to merge tags and get the name of the tag and then output that in an email, but it doesn't offer the same flexibility that you get with custom fields. Let's look at the similarities between tags and custom fields. Here in the email builder, we can dynamically show content based on the value of a custom field or a tag. Scrolling down at the end of this email, I want to output all the different lead magnets in my website, but I don't want to output them if the contact already has access to them. If I click on this one here for the ultimate habit tracking guide and then select the section, down here I can click add condition and then add new condition, contact field, the ultimate habit tracking guide is not, then downloaded and click save. And I would repeat the process for the other lead magnets. In the builder, you can also add conditions to show content based on tags. Matches any of, matches none of, matches all. You're probably wondering when should you use tags? Think of tags as being temporary and custom fields being more long-term storage of data about your contacts. So if you just need to go and get a group of your contacts and add a tag and it's for a sale and then the sale ends and then you just want to remove that tag and it's as if that tag never existed, then tags are going to be your best option. You'll also use tags to trigger actions in your automations. Here in this automation, if I click to select an event, I could start this automation when this tag is added or this tag is removed. If I search for field, there is no way to trigger an automation based on the value of a custom field updating. Now you're an expert in tags and custom fields. If you're an existing FunnelKit user, jump in, give it a go, and if you get stuck, reach out to our support. If you're not currently using the powerful features in FunnelKit automations, then definitely check out our pricing page and reach out to our pre-sales team. We're happy to help.